everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. So yeah, man, I was just scared to come out now, man. I was scared to come out the shower. I ain't um, I ain't know what was out there waiting for me. I ain't know who was out there waiting for me. So I had to make a decision, but I'm stuck in the shower and I got a shower covered up for so long that I know that it's going to draw attention. So I just made a decision, man. I just wrapped it up real good. You know, I, I had by this time I had come up with a system where I had little you know, pockets on my shorts and underwear and stuff. So I put the phone in there, I take the curtain down, and I come out. Now, when I get out, my fear even turn more into anger because once I don't see the police out there waiting for me, now I'm just mad because I don't know if one of these inmates or one of these convicts that went in there and got the phone, looked in it, they watching me to see if I come out with it or whatever. I don't know what the situation is, man. It's just chaos, man. So I'm mad as I don't know what. I know they got dudes that come out there at nighttime and work to clean the showers. They got dudes that come out there to clean the park. So it's only three of them. So I'm thinking that maybe one of them have been watching me and maybe one of them have went in there and messed with it. And then they know it's mine because they see I'm the one that go in there all the time and cover the shower. So I'm thinking in my mind that it's probably one of them and they know it's mine so they put it back. But they put it back and they didn't rewrap it the way it was because I, I'm, I'm very detailed, man, about how I, how I package it so I know that if somebody been in, you know, like uh, uh, Mr. Man on, um, on Color Purple, I be fixing that stuff so I know that they've been messed with, you know, so I fixed it. I know it was messed with, man. So I come out the shower, man. I got my shower bag and everything and... I go out, I don't even go up to my cell, man. I go over by the big uh, column that's in the pod, and I set my bag down, and I just lean on the post, man, and I'm just looking at people, man. I'm just eyeballing them, seeing if anybody eyeballing me, seeing if anybody watching me, and I'm specifically watching the dudes that worked out there at night to see if they look nervous, to see if they look, you know, anxious about something. So I'm just sitting there, man. I'm, I'm, I'm mean mugging. I'm looking like, man... And, man, I got blood in my eyes, man, because I'm like, you know, they they messing up my system, man. People is in my business. So I'm like, man, I'm just looking. And I'm like, if anybody give me that look like I think they did it, I don't, I don't even know what I would have did. I might have snapped out, man, because that's just how mad I was at the time. So I'm just looking around. I'm looking around. And some days in the block, we go to breakfast. Some days they tell us we're not going to breakfast. They lock us back in the in the cell and they bring us breakfast. So we waiting around. It's getting close to time for breakfast, man. And um, they come over on the loudspeaker and they holler, lock up. Everybody lock up. We feeding in. We feeding in. Lock up. So now I got to go to the cell. So I got to take the phone with me to the cell. Although I'm nervous, I'm more nervous about leaving it in the shower and somebody taking it. So I take it in the cell with me, which I didn't really want to do, but that's, that seemed like the best option at the time. So I take it in the cell with me, man. I go in there. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting back up and forth, man, looking out the door, waiting for him to bring the car in and feed breakfast because I'm, I'm nervous. You know, I got this phone on me. Somebody know I got it. I don't know who know I got it. I don't know if the police know I got it. I don't know if one of these dudes know I got it. And they're going to tell the people what. But it's in the cell. There's no way I could get, get rid of it now if they come run down on me, you know. So uh, I'm sitting in there, man. They come around, man. They feed breakfast. Uh, <laughs> we eat breakfast, man. They come around. They start picking up the trays. I, I know I, I told us these stories, man, so many times. Either to dudes when I got out, people in my family when I got out. They, I don't know if I told y'all this before or not or whether I told it on the other platform, but... Anyway, I, I, I sat down there, man, they finished, they started picking up the trays, they pick up the trays, and usually when they pick up the trays, we probably got about five, ten minutes after they finished picking up the trays and get the trays all out of the block and everything, that they just bust the doors open, and we come back out for wreck. So, 
I'm sitting in there, man, and I'm waiting. We waiting for him to bust the doors open. We waiting for him to bust the doors open. I'm laid up in there on the bunk. I heard the side door open, and I heard people come in. So I just lay. I don't do nothing. I don't panic or whatever, whatever. Then I heard somebody holler, investigators in here, man, investigators in here. So I'm like, oh, my goodness, man. So boom, in your mind, you thinking that you hoping and praying that it ain't you. But in your mind, you don't know, but you know you dirty. You know the situation that just happened this morning. So it's like, nah, it can't be, it can't be, it can't be. Sure enough, man, they come straight up there, come straight to our, uh, my cell. They bust the cell door open, man. My cell is in there laying on the bunk. Um, they, they tell us to get up, right, and tell my cell, just like this, step out. My cell step out. Now, I'm laid on the bed now. I know what the play is now. I already know I'm busted. Something is going down. Something is fishy. You know what I'm saying? And all of my, you know, suspicions is coming to light. So, they look at me. They say, uh, get up for a minute. So, I get up off the bunk. <coughs> Excuse me. I hit the floor. So, they say, uh, we're going to need you to strip search. So, I say, what? She so said, we're going to need you to strip search. They got two investigators. They got the male investigator and they got the female. So I said, you need me to strip search? He said, yeah, I see you, all right. So I get up, I start taking my clothes off. Now, at the time, I got the phone in a pocket in my underwear. So you can't really see it unless you actually take the underwear. Even if I take the underwear off, man, it was, it was, it was, it was just a nice little spot. You can't really see it unless you take the underwear and touch the underwear. So... I take off all my clothes, man. I get down to my underwear. When I get down to my underwear, I pull my underwear down, squat and call. <clears throat> That's what they used to tell you to do. I pull my underwear back up. I, I had took my clothes off and started setting them on the bed. So then I reach for my clothes, start putting my clothes back on. So the, uh, the uh, investigator said, nah, nah. He said, uh, nah, I need you to uh, take everything off and hand it to me. I say, what? He said, take everything off and hand it to me. I said, man, I ain't doing all of that, man. I just script search, man. What are you talking about? So I kept on start putting my clothes on. So he reached over like he get ready to uh, grab my clothes or either to stop me. So when he reached for me like that, I turned around and spin and face him. I said, look, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you put your hands on me or you touch something here that don't belong to you, man, I'm going to F you up. Straight up. So he bagged all the way up to the door. The female investigator, she was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What y'all doing? So I said, look. I don't know what's going on. The man that just strip searched me. I ain't doing no more. What is he on? He on some gay stuff or something. I'm already got naked for him. What do you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do nothing else. You know, so I start steady putting my clothes on. So he tell me, he said, don't put them clothes on. I said, man, F you, man. I'm putting these clothes on, man. You better get up out here. You know, so he get on the radio. He call the people, call the code, tell them, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, whatever he tell them. So, man, I know I'm busted now, you know what I'm saying? I know I'm busted just as clear as day. I know, you know, the cross is in effect. So, I, I started putting my clothes on, man. I put my sweatpants back on, and uh, I throw my shirt on. So, I walk over to the toilet. <laughs> I walk over to the toilet and act like I had to spit in the toilet. I spit in the toilet. I push the button to flush the toilet because I wanted to see was the water on. Was the toilet still on because of it was still on? I was going to pull the phone out and drop it in the toilet right in front of him and flush it. So when I did that and pushed the button, it ain't even flush. So he tried to be slick. He said, oh, yeah, we already cut the water off. He said, we are. I said, man. So he antagonized me now. So I looked at him. I'm like, man, look, you better get on up out here, bro. You better get on up out here. I'm telling you now, man, because I say, man, you pissing me off and, and you antagonizing me. You better get up out here. So I started getting all up in his face because now, <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking I want to rumble. I want to fight. Because usually if you get to fighting with a CO or you get to fighting with the police or something like that, man, they're going to come and jump on you so bad and so deep, so many people that they just want to get you subdued and hog-tied and all that and get their little punches in and they're going to take you straight to the hole and throw you in the cell because you're already confrontational. So I'm hoping that that, that that can happen. So if that happened, then maybe they don't you know forget about keep on searching me and find the phone because I'm thinking the phone is either more you know, damaging than just me getting into a fight with the CO. Because if I get in a fight with the CO, I ain't gonna do nothing to say he antagonized me. I was defending myself, which ain't gonna work. They gonna give you the charge anyway. But I'm thinking that the phone charge is gonna be much worse 
and I wanted to break the phone. I wanted to get rid of all the information on the phone. So I get all up in his face and everything. He get all scared like the coward that he is. He's talking all tough, but he's scared. I'm all up on him like this. He's turning his head. I'm right here. The female uh, investigator, she's scared. She tells him, calm down now. Calm down. Come on now. We ain't going to do all of that. We're not going to do all that. So I'm on him, man. He's like, all right, all right, okay, all right. I said, yeah, all right. I said, man, I told you, stop antagonizing me. Leave me alone. You don't know script search me. Leave me alone, man. Get up out my cell. So my seller, he's standing out there. They ain't even got him, you know what I'm saying, cuffed up or nothing. He just standing right there. So obviously, they came directly for me, you know, and they was letting him know right now, you ain't got nothing to do with this. You just step out the cell. You see what I'm saying? So, uh... Man, I'm up on him, man. I'm talking trash. Then I back up off of him, man, because I heard all these footsteps coming. Patter, 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 They come running in there. They deep, man. First is it's two. Then it's five. Then it's eight. Then it's 12. Then it's 15. And they run all up to the cell. What's up? What's up? Turn around. Turn around. Put the cuffs on. Turn around. Put the cuffs on. So I'm like, man, what's up? What's up? You know, then the captain come in. It's the same captain that, you know, was... On, on deck when I had the phone on Greensville. So they come in, you know what I'm saying? Then I see the uh, unit manager come in. They tell me turn around, cuff up. They cuff me up. They tell me some, come on. They grab both arms. They take me downstairs. They take me into the uh, um, sergeant's office. So I go into the sergeant's office, man. Then they get the um, major. The major come in there. They got the unit manager in there. They got lieutenant in there, the captain in there, and two officers. So I'm in here with all these dudes, man, six, seven dudes, and I'm standing in there, and I'm like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? They um, they say, uh, hold up, hold up, hold up for a minute. So they start whispering amongst each other, and then the, 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 the investigator dude, he step outside with the um, unit manager, and they just leave the door cracked open. Now I'm still up in here with all these dudes, and I'm sitting there looking. I'm looking for a way that I can try to get rid of this phone, but there's no way I can. It's just a small room. So I'm up in there. I heard the door crack. I'm listening. They whispering amongst each other, but I heard him. I literally heard him say, uh, yeah, we believe he got a phone on him, right? And uh, I see the unit manager look, turn around and look back at me, and he look back at him, and they start talking. They pushed the door all the way closed so you couldn't hear anything anymore. So then they out there, maybe about 30, 45 seconds, they bust the door back open. They come in. They said, man, we're going to need you to strip search. I said, man, I already strip search. They said, well, we're going to need you to strip search again. So I'm like, yeah, all right, man. So I'm in here with all these dudes. I start strip searching again. They all standing there looking at me. So I take everything off, you know, get to my underwear, take them off too. So I got my clothes right here on the floor in a pile, in a pile. So all the clothes is laying down there in a the pile. So I look at them. I'm like, what's up? You know what I'm saying? They said, well, you know, squat and cough. I squat. You know, lift my junk up, squat, cough, whatever, whatever, stand up, hold my hands out. I said, what's up, man? That's it? You know what I'm saying? So he said, step step back for a minute. So I step back. When I step back, one of the lieutenants walk up. They grab my clothes. They pull the clothes over there to them. They start touching and feeling all on my clothes. When they, <laughs> when they get to the underwear, you know, they start feeling on it, and they, they I guess they feel the phone. So when they feel the phone, they flip the underwear open, and they reach in, they pull the phone out, say, oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> That's when I looked at them and I said, well, what's that? You know what I'm saying? They're like, you know what it is? I said, man, what is that? So they said, man, you know what it is, man. So he handed it over to the major. The major looking at it. The uh, unit manager, he goes over and look at it too. He turned around and looked at me. He said, oh, man. He said, man, I ain't think you had no phone, man. You, They kept saying, well, they get the word, tell me they heard you had a phone. I said, oh, no, he be in the cell. You don't bother nobody. I don't think he, man, and all the time, that's why you been in the cell, man. You got a phone up in there. I said, man, I ain't got no phone. That ain't mine. They said, man, we just got it out your house. I said, man, y'all ain't get that out my underwear, man. I don't know what y'all did. That's some sleight of hand trick, some, some David Copperfield stuff or something. I ain't never seen that before, man. Let me see. So I, I, I'm naked. I walk over there like, see, some, some, step back, step back. I said, man, that ain't mine, man. You know, they said, oh, man, you disappoint me, man. I ain't know. I, they said they was coming and 
Go in your cell. They thought you had a phone. They heard you had a phone. I told them you ain't made no noise since you been in my building. Um, it ain't you ain't got no phone up. And you done disappointed me, man. You got a phone. I say, bro, that ain't my phone. I ain't never seen that in my life. I say every phone I ever seen got a cord on it and you dial it, man. I say, I don't know nothing about that phone, man. I've been locked up all this time. I don't know nothing about that phone. That phone ain't mine. You know what I'm saying? They was like, oh man. They said, go ahead and put your clothes on. So I started putting my clothes on, right? They over there examining the phone, opening the phone up, looking at it, trying to figure it out and everything. But the phone had a code on it, so they couldn't get in the phone. So I'm like, oh, man, this is crazy. So in my mind, it's just reeling and reeling. I'm like, man, these people done set me up. Somebody done set me up. Somebody done threw me up under the bus and show us, I don't know what, show us gross is grosses because they would not have came at me like that. So when I get all dressed and everything, they tell me turn around, cuff up. They cuff me up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's up, man? They said, man, you know what's up. You going to jail. You know what I'm saying? I said, for what? They say you got a phone. I said, that phone is not mine, man. They said, well, we just got it off your property, man. We just got it off of you, so it's your phone. I said, man, you did not get that phone up off of me, man. You know, they said, well, you, you know, you're going to jail. So here I go, cuffed up, on my way, back to the beam. Yeah, I'm back in the beam, man. Back in the hole, man. Back in the shoe. You know, back there in SEG, man. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. Now I got another phone charge. I just beat the other phone charge. Now I got this phone charge to deal with again. First thing come to my mind, man, I know my mom going to snap out, man. My people going to snap out. They like, man, they going to ask me, what am I crazy? And at the time, I'm feeling like I am crazy, man, because these phones have become an addiction. You know, it was, a, it was an outlet to the rest of the world. I got this outlet to the rest of the world, man. I'm fascinated, and uh, I'm, I'm stuck, man. I'm here, stuck again. So I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm still not going to claim the phone. But at the same time, I know how I beat the charge for the other phone. It was possession. I didn't have, They didn't have possession of it on me. So it's going to be very, very difficult, if impossible, to beat this charge because they're going to say, that they had all these officers, unit manager, majors, captains in there right there where they strip searched me and they took it right out of my, my, my clothing. So I'm sitting back here, man. My head is reeling. I'm stuck, you know, sitting in the cell with nothing but underclothes and, 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 and a sheet and a blanket in the bed. And that's it. You know, I ain't got my property or nothing like that. I'm mad about my property, which became a, a bigger issue because I'm sitting there. And um, I'm weighed, man, uh, about two days go by. I ain't get my property. Usually when you go back to the hole, you know, they bag up your stuff. They send it over the property. They send you uh, the property that you can have in the hole, which is nothing. You know, your personal items, your uh, uh, phone book, a um, couple of books, uh, magazines, if you had any in your property, you know, a few of your cosmetics that you can have back there. And that's all you're getting back there in segregation. So, it's a couple of days go by, I ain't got mine. So, I start raising raising cane back there, you know. I already know I'm late. Once you already, once I already know my back is against the wall, then I'm already late. There ain't no need there for me to keep on being, you know, docile or whatever because I know that the chance of me getting out of this is slim to none. So, now I'm demanding what I'm supposed to have. So, I'm going to keep on asking for my property, ask for my property. They telling me, man, investigators got a hold of my property. They going through my property. So, I'm going to have to wait. I'm like, nah, I'm still supposed to get what I'm supposed to get. They can do whatever they're going to do, but they need to get me my property. I need to get an inventory sheet to make sure all of my property is still intact. Y'all took me out to sale without my property. You left my property in there with another man. So, I don't know what's missing and what's not missing. I need to have an inventory which y'all took out of my property so I can know that all of my stuff is secure. So, they arguing with me. We going back and forth, back and forth. I don't get no resolution. So I started acting up, I started banging on the door, I started threatening the flood, do all of this crazy stuff that you got to do to get some attention because when you behind that door, man, they will walk by you a hundred times a day and just ignore you like you just a, 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 a animal in a cage, man. You talking and they just walk right on by you like you ain't said nothing and it will annoy you to a point, man, that you be ready to explode, you be ready to, to lash out, man, and it just, it's just... It's a feeling that you can't explain unless you actually have been in that position. For all of y'all out there that's been in that cage before, you know what I'm talking about. For somebody to just ignore you like you just don't even exist. 
So, man, I just start protesting more. I bang on the door. I'm banging. I'm banging. And I'm banging, man, for 30, 40 minutes just banging. So they keep on coming around there and say, you got to get off the door. You got to stop making all that noise. I'm like, I ain't stop making nothing. You better get somebody over here, man, to tell me what's going on with my property. I want my property. I'm supposed to have my property, and I want my property. Well, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, unit manager say, you keep on banging on the door, man. They coming over here, man. They're going to they gonna chain you down. I said, tell them, come on with it. Tell them, come on with it. I said, I want to see them anyway. Tell them, come on with it. <clears throat> so... I keep on banging, I keep on banging, man. Eventually, man, the uh, building lieutenant come over there. He tried to talk to me. He tried to tell me, they got your property, man. We can't get you your property until investigators finish with your property. You know, I said, well, what about the stuff I supposed to have? He said, they're not going to separate it. They're going through everything. They said, as soon as they finish the investigation, you'll get your property. I'm like, nah, that ain't good enough, man. I need to get my property. I don't even, you know, have my phone, but I need to be able to use the phone. When it comes time for me to use the phone, you can only use the phone in segregation like once a month, <laughs> once a month for 15 minutes. So I'm like, by the time it comes for me to be able to use the phone to get to the phone, I'm not even going to know, know nobody to call because I don't even have my phone book. So he said, I don't know, man. I talked to the unit manager and see what he said, but that's what they told me to tell you. But they say you got to get off the door, stop banging on the door. I said, okay, well, you go back and tell them. I said, I'm not going to stop banging on the door. Ain't going to be no peace back here till somebody come tell me what's going on. I need my property, which y'all telling me is not sufficient enough for me. So we go through that back and forth, back and forth. And here come the old unit manager, old Clary. He coming back there with his uh, big, uh, free Fredstone looking self, man. And he come back there. He tell me some look. I'm not gonna say they argue with you. You have stopped making all that noise. The people got your property. We can't do nothing about it. It's up to the investigators. They said they're gonna get you your property, man, within a couple of days when they finish going through it. Da 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 da. I said, man, I don't even know what what if they got all of my property out of my sale. I need an inventory sheet. Can I get an inventory sheet? He said, I can't do nothing about it. They gonna get it to you when they can get it to you. I'm like, man, y'all, man, y'all gonna have to scrap up then. Y'all gonna have to scrap up. I said, cause I'm gonna be tear this sale up. I'm gonna be the flood or whatever. He said, well, you better not do it. I'm telling you, you better not. I said, I'm telling you, man. I want my stuff. You know what I'm saying? So we arguing back and forth. So he ended up walking off, telling me he gonna holler at him. That's the best he can do. But I better not flood this, that, and the third. I'm sitting here and I'm really contemplating flooding and banging the door and just keep on banging it because I'm just irritated, I'm frustrated, and I'm mad with myself because I had to trick myself up again. You know, I got to take responsibility for it. It was all really on me, but I'm looking for a way to, 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 to release this anger or a way to release this frustration. Like, oh, man, Banky, man, you done messed up again, man. You should have just left the phone alone, waited, waited it out, man, made them transfer you, pressed them to transfer you because you was in the right, you beat the charge. By all rights, you're supposed to get transferred. And here it is, I done had this phone for a five-year run before somebody else crossed me up thinking that I'm smart enough that I could do it again even on this institution even though I just come up over that charge knowing that the eyes going to be on me even though it's another institution they send that paperwork with you. So, man, it don't even last uh, six, seven months, man, you know, before I got towed off with this phone. So, um, back in the hole, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just laid back there, just miserable, irritated i haven't been able to call nobody which is a good thing because i know i'm gonna get the business when i call and tell them i'm, I'm locked up in the hole for what a phone what a phone you know so yeah i'm back there man i'm waiting and um i think it's about a week and a half man almost close to two weeks man did they they bring me my property when they bring me my property they bring me the little stuff that i can have little cosmetics my little phone book stuff like that when I get it, I get the inventory sheet. I look at the inventory sheet, and man, I really want to snap, man. I don't, I mean, a whole lot of my stuff is missing or either is not listed on my inventory sheet. When they give you your inventory sheet, it's supposed to inventory everything that you got in your property, everything that they took out of your cell, all the way down to a pencil, you know. And I see so much stuff missing, man. I see uh, uh, tapes missing from my cassette player. I see my robe missing. I see a uh, sweatshirt missing, I see uh, clothes missing, shorts, uh, 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 sweatpants, all this stuff missing, man. I'm like, man, where is, where is this stuff at? So I'm banging now. Now I want to see the property officer. So I keep banging. I get to talk to the sergeant. I tell the property officer, you know what I'm saying? Look, man, my stuff is missing, man. Where, where is my stuff? They say everything 
that we got out your sales inventory on here. So now I'm like, what? They said, well, if anything missing, you know, I don't know where it's at. We took everything out to sale. I said, well, who packed my stuff out myself? They tell me, which is crazy because this is the type of stuff they do. They say, well, your seller packed all your stuff and we took it out to sale and we put it in the sizes office and we left it there for the investigators to deal with it. Now, I already know where the problem at now because, first of all, you ain't got no business letting my seller pack my stuff. Period. You ain't got no business letting my seller pack my stuff. My seller don't work for DOC. But they'll do that because they lazy and they don't want to do their job. Now, if you got a credit seller, your credit seller, it, he can go through your stuff and take out what he want and, and send whatever he want to send and say, that's yours and this is, right? Now, being that I am who I am, I ain't got my seller going to do that because they know, that, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to have a problem when I come out. But therein lies the problem. Everybody and their mama know if you get caught with that phone, you ain't even coming back out on that institution. So by them knowing that I'm not even coming back out, it's a possibility that my seller could have went through my stuff because he know I'm not coming back out. All he got to claim is he ain't never do it. You know what I'm saying? That he gave all my property to the people and they did it and I'd be none the wiser. So I'm in a catch-22 now because I don't know who got my stuff, but I know that the property ain't got no reason to take personal little items out there because it ain't going to do them no good. But somebody, a convict can, an inmate can because he can use my clothes, he can use the tapes, he can use the stuff that I'm missing. You know, little food and stuff was missing as well. So, man, I'm I'm blood mad, man. You know what I'm saying? They they claiming that they 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 inventoried everything that was there. I get a um the kitchen dudes get to coming over there bringing the food and stuff. So I got a homeboy to work with a kitchen dude. He works in the kitchen, so he wanted the dudes to come back there and feed the food. He feed me good, making sure I get extra food or whatnot. But I sent a message. I write a kite, send a message out there to my cellie, and. I told him to make sure my seller get the message. So I write my seller and I tell my seller in no, uh, you know, no uncertain terms. I say, listen, man, I got stuff missing out of my property. These people is telling me that uh, you pack my property. That if anything missing, you got it. I said, I'm not going to tell the people to come to your cell and look for my property because that's police stuff. I don't do that. I said, OK, but I'm letting you know that if I find out that you got my stuff, if, if I hear or tell anybody got my robe on, anybody got anything that belong to me, I got some dudes out there, they looking for my stuff. If they see anybody wearing my stuff, I know it only could have got taken from you. I'm telling you right now, bro, if I ever run into you anywhere, you know what time it is, period. So if you know where my stuff at, you better get my stuff and get it over the property and make sure the inventory in my property. You know what I'm saying? So... He got the message, obviously, man, about, about four or five days later, he sent a kite back, say, man, bank, man, I packed all your stuff. Man, what happened was they took your stuff down there, they put it in the sizes office, they left it down there for some days, man. You know dudes go back and forth, in and out the sizing office, so dudes could have been in and out the sizes office and winning your stuff and took stuff out because they weren't watching it like that. They just had your boxes and stuff in there until investigators can get to it. But I ain't take none of your stuff. If I see any of your stuff, man, I'm going to make sure I grab it. I'm going to make sure I let you know who had it, blah, blah, blah. None of that was satisfactory to me, man. I'm just stuck in misery, man. My property missing. I'm in the hole. I'm on my way to a higher institution. I don't know where I'm going. And, man, that was only just the beginning of the cross-up. Little did I know. Because now I got this charge, and I'm facing this charge, and... Uh, I don't know what's going on, but they delaying it, they delaying it, and then the next thing you know, I get the charge, man. I end up having to go for the charge. I go for the charge. They find me guilty of the charge. This automatically means I'm going to a higher level. But then when I get the paperwork, they done put the cross in on the paperwork. They said that uh, inmate got caught with two phones in less than a, a calendar year. We recommend the highest level of security. So they trying to shoot me to the moon, the Red Onion, and Wallace Ridge, and all this. So then I started protesting, saying, hold up, wait a minute. I got found with one phone because I beat the other phone. This should not even be in my paperwork that I had two phones because I beat the charge. So you are putting this in there for when you send this paperwork to Richmond, you can justify sending me way up in the mountains where as to I shouldn't be going up there because technically this is only the first phone that I got caught with and convicted of. Furthermore, I the 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 um 
The rules state that when you get caught with a phone on the institution, you go to the next level up. Okay, I'm on the level four. I should be on the level three. I should not even never been here. So because I beat that charge. So technically, I supposed to stay where I'm at because this is a level four because I supposed to be on the level three. Now, I know all that sounds complicated, but in actuality, it was a fact. It was an actual fact because I was supposed to have been on the three anyway because I beat the charge. Y'all just got me here because y'all hadn't transferred me yet. So now, if technically I get caught with a phone on here, I don't even supposed to be on here anyway. So anything that happens to me on here really is at y'all expense because y'all got me on a level that I don't even supposed to be on. This is why y'all created the levels so y'all can say, well, he belongs here, he belongs here for whatever reasons. So if I don't even supposed to be here, you know, whatever happens to me here, it's on y'all. It's not even on me. So, you know, I was supposed to literally either stay at a four or either been sent back to a three where I was supposed to have been from the beginning. Had I not been here, I couldn't have got caught with a phone. I couldn't even have a phone. You see what I'm saying? So that was my argument. <laughs> it sounded good. It was technically correct, but it all fell on deaf ears, man. They had to cross in for me. It wasn't nothing I could do about it. They was just uh, locked in on sending me up in the mountains, man. They, they, they just felt like I was getting away with these phones, that I had something going on with these phones, and man, they just, they, they just put the cross in on me. I ended up just laying back there in that hole, man, arguing, beefing, fussing with them, all trying to state my case. All of it was falling on deaf ears. The bottom line was they was getting ready to send me up in the mountains and want nothing I could do about it. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious, man. My name is. Uh... Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.